So, fun fact. As I was doing the outline for this video today, I was listening to Elvis music, which I think tells you how much I really, really like this film. Why Elvis is the best musical battle pick? So, I've seen Elvis twice now, I saw it again yesterday, and it is, it's still so, so good in my opinion, it really is, but like, when I first saw it, it was a good couple hours after I seen the movie, but I was still so, so excited about it, like, I don't know if you could tell in my first review, I was really excited just to talk about Elvis, like, I got home, and I thought, I just want to unload all my thoughts right now, so I got home, I got my camera out, and I did my review, but I was very excited in it, I was just kind of, you know, just spamming out thoughts, going, oh, this is as well, this is really good and thing like that, but I didn't, you know, explain myself the best in that review. You know, I don't explain myself the best anyway, but I didn't do it the best in my review. And also, I want to expand on some of the thoughts I said in that first review in this video later on in the video as well. But one of the things I said in my first review was that I think that this is the best biopic that I've seen. I also said some other things as well. Like I said, this film is a masterpiece. It's my favourite movie 2022 so far. And I still, I still think it is. I still think it is a masterpiece. And I still think it is my favourite film of 2022 at the moment. But at the same time though, I also said that this was the best biopic I'd ever seen. And I want to clarify that, I meant musical battle pick. To be fair, I did go on and say, like, I did go on and compare it to, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocky Man, and so on and so on and so on. But the thing is, though, what I meant was that it was the best musical battle pick I'd seen. Because, you know, I've seen quite a few battle picks, and I have to kind of reassess my thoughts on them. Because battle picks is a whole different domain than itself, and I have to think about some of the other battle picks we've seen. But what I meant was that it was the best musical battle pick I've seen. Because I've seen many musical battle picks now. Like I've seen Noah Boy, which is all about the early life of John Lennon. I've seen What's Love Got To Do With It, which is a Tina Turner battle pick. I've also seen Get On Up, which is a James Brown battle pick, which I think I, which I which think is great, by the way. I also saw Rocket Man, which I really like. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, I Love To Pieces. You know, Straight Outta Compton, I think it's a good film. And at the same time, though, I recently just watched What The Lion the other day, which I think, I think it's a depressing movie but again a really good one but this one's better than all those other movies in my opinion and simply because of one big reason because of his execution because of his filmmaking and because of the storytelling from Baz Luhrmann which is just so, so good in the film and the fact that Elvis is such a Baz Luhrmann film which you know won't be for everyone but at the same time though was for me and that is why I think it's the best musical battle pick but the point I want to make as well is that I've seen a lot of people in the past you know I've heard a lot of people in the past say that you know musical battle picks are all the same they have the same sort of plot you know you have the artist or group of artists who you know make some music get signed by a manager and get some record deal and things like that but then as they get more famous a lot more complications occur they get more addicted to drugs more addicted to sex maybe have some like complicated relation maybe have some like toxic relation in there and also you start to see their downfall maybe between like a group of artists like a band like in straight compton you might see the band split up for you know a small amount of time but then towards the end of the movie the artist or the band has a redemption in some sort of way you know, sometimes redemption in these musical battle picks isn't a big redemption, like the whole live aid sequence at the end of Bohemian Rhapsody, because sometimes, instead, it's a bit more of an intimate redemption, like at the end of Elvis, you just see him, I'm not to go into too much detail here, but you just see him sing Unchained Melody, or uh, doing a fantastic job of it at that as well. So sometimes the redemption isn't always as grand as you may want it to be, but sometimes it also works in the film's favour, like it does with Elvis. But you get the point I'm trying to make, though. More often than not, the outline for all these music battle picks is pretty much the same but that doesn't hugely bother me because a lot of people who say that are also huge fans of comic book movies and superhero movies and when you think about it comic book movies and superhero movies and I'm not saying it's a bad thing by the way I'm not saying it's a bad thing but many of them have the same outline I'm thinking of one super movie at the top of my head right now this is a plot, this is the outline, this is a general plot. I mean, obviously, there's more intricate details, but this is a general plot for the super movie I'm thinking of the top of my head. So we have this superhero, and we see them get their powers, and we see, you know, them experiment their powers, they often have like a sidekick, a bit of a comical sidekick, if you will, 
And also at the same time though, we see a super villain get their powers. And then basically, half of the film, we see the superhero and the super villain meet for the first time. And the superhero will lose that fight, and the super villain will win that fight when they meet for the first time. But then later in the movie, the superhero will win and save the day whilst the super villain is defeated. The super villain will often die, or they'll get locked up in prison, something like that, if you know they want to bring them back in a future film. And at the same time though, along the way, there's often a love interest thrown in there. And if it's a team up movie, like an Avengers film, Justice League, or Guarantee galaxy something like that you often see the group bonding and i was just thinking on the top of my head though the movie i was thinking on the top of my head right there and then was spider-man spider-man homecoming that was the time i was thinking of but at the same time though apart from a few differences you could really adhere that plot outline to so many of the super movies you really could maybe not every single super movie like maybe there'd be some odd ones in a bunch like obviously Avengers Infinity War the heroes lose but at the same time though Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame are basically the same story but so in the end the heroes do win in that film so the heroes do win in that story should I say but yes you get the point I'm trying to make you know the outline for so many superhero movies and comic movies and I'm not saying this is a bad thing by the way I'm not don't misread what I'm saying but they've all got the same outline, much like a musical battle pick. Let's take another genre, for example. Let's take a look at the spy genre. You know, I'm thinking of one James Bond movie that's on my head right now. I'm thinking of one James Bond movie. And so this is the general outline, the general plot for the movie I'm thinking of. We have Bond, and then he gets sent on a mission. We have James Bond who's sent on a mission. You has to go and defeat this big evil supervillain who often has a cat. He doesn't have a cat in the example I'm thinking of, but he will often have a cat. He often has a white cat, which he strokes in a quite mysterious and evil way. But anyway, that's not the sort of Bond villain I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of a different Bond villain. But anyway, nevertheless, yes, okay, James Bond sent on a mission to go and defeat a big evil super villain. Along the way, he'll meet a woman or women and have some intimate relations with them. And at the same time, though, he'll meet a henchman, which he has to go and defeat, who has been sent to him by the evil super villain. But then, eventually, you know, or for the second time, James Bond will meet the super villain. And the super villain will tell James Bond his plan. And just as the big evil villain in this James Bond movie or in this spy movie is about to put their plan into action, Bond will just manage to save the day and also save the woman he wants to have intimate relationships with later on in the film or in the future. And that's essentially the outline for many of these spy films. And I was just thinking of the man with the golden gun there. But that could also adhere to the plot for, I don't know, you know, Skyfall. It could also adhere to the plot for Octopus. It could also adhere to the plot for License to Kill. It could also adhere to the plot for Much With Love. Obviously, there might be some, you know, small differences. But at the same time, though, it's Wolfie all got the same plot. It's Wolfie all got the same sort of outline. And I just, I want to make the point again that I'm not saying spider movies are bad. You know, you can also hear the outline to the Mission Impossible films. And I've been loving the Mission Impossible films lately, especially the latest one, Mission Impossible Fallout, was a terrific film in my opinion. But at the same time though, you know, all these people go, well, musical battle picks all have the same plot outline. You can say the exact same thing about spy movies for the most part. I mean, I just talked about the James Bond films, the Mission Impossible films was there, but you could probably adhere those sort of plot lines as well to the Jason Bourne franchise. I don't know, I haven't seen those movies, but still, you get the point I'm making. And also, you know, we have the same sort of plot outline for most superhero movies and most comic book movies as well. And again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. There's some comic movies out there and some super movies that I absolutely love. You know, I love James Gunn comic book movies because I think he's an auteur filmmaker and I think he really gets his style in his films, like the Guardians of Galaxy movies. I love them, the Suicide Squad film. I think that's fantastic. I think the Suicide Squad is a great movie. And also, if you look at Chris Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, I love those films because they're Chris Nolan films. They're so brilliantly directed. And also, if you look at some like DC movies, I really like Birds of Prey because I think it's different. I think it's exciting. I think it perfectly captures you know the kinds of Harley Quinn in its style. And you know, for the good and bad reason, but at the same time, though, I think it's a lot of fun to watch that movie. And also, if you look at you know like non DC or non MCU films, you know. If you look at something like Kick Ass, that also adheres to that same sort of plotline. Look, I look at something like the Kingsman movies. You know, the Kingsman movies can kind of fit into the spy genre and the comic book genre because I think the Kingsman films are based on comic books. I'm not entirely sure about that, but still, you get the point I'm making. You know, many, many films can fit into those plot lines, but I'm not saying it's a bad thing because the reason I like, you know, many super movies like Guardians of the Galaxy and like the Suicide Squad and like the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy and like, you know, the Spider Man, the Tom Holland Spider Man movies and like the Tom McGuire. Spider-Man movies and so on and so on and so on is because 
they're different, they stand out in my opinion. And that's kind of how I want to tie it up to Elvis. You know, many musical biopics are the same sort of outline, many comic movies and many super movies have the same sort of plot outline. But it's how they're different, it's how they're done in their execution, how the filmmaking is different, how the story's told in a different way, which makes it stand out against the bunch. And that's why I think Elvis is the best musical biopic. Not sure if I made my point incredibly well that I've got to admit, not sure if I tied my point up well at all, because I'm not feeling the best right now. I've got hay fever, I don't know if you can notice, I'm a bit bummed up right now, because hay fever is its finest in the summer, it's always at its finest, so I do apologise if it sounds a bit weird. But also, I'm not feeling the best because I've got hay fever right now, so I might be making my point entirely well. I mean, I don't make my, I don't make my point entirely well in general, but still, I might not be making my point at the best right now. But still, the point I'm making is just because a musical biopic, or just because a spy movie, or just because a super movie might have the same sort of plot outline, doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean people should be put up by them. I mean, look at super movies nowadays. Look at the MCU. You know, everyone's excited for Love and Thunder, which is fine. You know, I'm personally not that excited for it, but I can understand why people are. And I'm happy that people are excited to see the next big comic book movie or super movie. But... Don't one of those people who goes, well, musical battle picks all the same plot. But actually, I'm really, really excited for the next Thor. I'm really excited for the next Black Panther. I'm really excited for the next, I don't know, Flash film. I'm really excited for the next Shazam. There's something like that. And I'm excited for those films, by the way. I want those films to be fantastic. But they've all got the same sort of plot outline. And you know by the end, in Thor, Love and Thunder, that Christian Bale's villain's going to be defeated. You know in the next Mission Impossible film, which, by the way, the next Mission Impossible film, you know, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, which is one of the longest tactical films ever, you know that at the end of that movie, Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt, the main character, will end up defeating the villain, whether it be in, you know, this movie or the next movie, because, you know, part one and part two, it's the same story. But you get the point, the story in all these movies, that's what I'm trying to say here, the story. Couldn't think of that word. I'm so stupid, but yes, the story in all these comic movies and all these spy movies and things like that are roughly the same. You might get some differences, like, obviously, if it's the start of a superhero trilogy, you get the superhero getting their powers. And if it's a second movie, obviously, you're not going to see that take place again. Like, in Spider-Man 2, you don't want to see Spider-Man get his powers again, but you get the point I'm making, though. You know, they roughly all have the same plot. You know the villain's going to be defeated in some sort of way. You know, maybe the villain doesn't die in a spider movie or in a comic book movie. Maybe to put in prison, but they are ultimately defeated. And that's the point I'm making. You know, it's always that same sort of idea. But then you hear all these people who get so excited about super movies, which is great. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But I'm also saying that I don't understand people who go, because there are some people out there, which is understandably so, but I don't understand people who go, you know, musical battle picks are all the same, but then they're huge fans of super movies. It's all super movies, and again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, don't misread me, but all super movies, you know, roughly have the same story. And your musical biopics are the same, you know, they all look at the same story as well, but that's not a bad thing. It's how you tell that story, it's the execution, the filmmaking, it's how the films are different. And that's why Elvis is my favourite musical biopic. You know, that's why Elvis is my favourite musical biopic, because even so, I'm a huge fan of Getting Up, the James Brown biopic, which I think is a terrific movie. Even so, I'm a huge fan of what's Love Got To Do with the Tina Turner biopic. Even so, I'm a huge fan of Noah Boy. Even so, I'm a huge fan of Australia Compton. Even so, I'm a fan of, you know, Rocky Man. Even so, I'm a fan of Walk The Line. Even so, I'm a fan of Bohemian Rhapsody. I love that movie to pieces. Elvis is different because of its storytelling, because of its Baz Luhrmann direction. And I know Baz Luhrmann isn't for everybody. His style is very out there. It's that sort of style where you have to go with it or you don't. But the thing is though, even so, you know, Baz Luhrmann's direction is for everybody. It is for me. And when I watched Elvis, it was different because it's just, I think that Baz Luhrmann's direction perfectly marries up to the story which is told about Elvis' life in the Elvis biopic. Because it's just the filmmaking is so different, it's so much more expansive, it's so much more just out there, so much more Baz Luhrmann. But that really enough words because it's showy, it's expensive. You know, I said in my first review of Elvis that it looks like an expensive film. What I meant was it looks like a showy movie. It looks, it's, it's showy. You, know, you see all these big giant set pieces. You see Elvis perform quite a lot, and it's always you know going like, oh, he's always doing the moves and things like that. The classic Elvis moves that you see him do, what they used to see him do back in like videos when he's performing like the 50s and 60s and the 70s. He's doing the classic Elvis moves, and it's showy and it looks expensive, but in a way, movies should. And that's why I think. 
that Elvis is the best musical barrel pick. Sure, it has that same sort of story of an artist who, you know, he gets signed by a manager, he gets some great record deals, but then he also, well, he becomes more famous, you know, he gets addicted to drugs, he often has quite a lot of affairs, he'll get married and have a bit of a complicated relationship with his partner, his life starts to go downhill, but then you ultimately see his sort of redemption in the end. Even so, yes, it does still adhere to that story, it's different because it's a Baz Luhrmann film. It's so well directed. The filmmaking is exciting. It leaps off the screen in the way you want it to. And it's just, it's such a fun and enthralling film to watch, in my opinion. It's not going to be for everyone because it's a Baz Luhrmann film and his style isn't for everyone. I mean, just look at the adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, which he made. But at the same time, though, this film, for me, when I was watching, I was like, this is what biopics should be like. Like, don't get me wrong, I really like the sort of intimate and rich storytelling of War the Lion, which is quite, you know, really focuses on the character of Johnny Cash and what he was really like back in the day, or the person of Johnny Cash, I'd say, the real life person of Johnny Cash. And also the fact that the human rights is a bit corny, and all the fact that, you know, it's clearly fictionalised, but that doesn't really matter in some parts. I love moments like that of Human Rhapsody, and I love how Rocky Man's a bit of a musical fantasy. I love things like that in these movies, but for me Elvis just kind of felt like a fever dream. It felt like an experience, which is the point I want to make. It felt like an experience which other music biopics haven't for me. I can still really love some of those other music biopics I've seen in the past, like Bohemian Rhapsody, like Walk the Line, and like Shadow Compton, and so on and so on and so on, but at the same time though, you know, the way this film tells its story, just, it feels like an experience. It feels like you go on the Elvis experience and Bad Lum directs and he's taking you along with you. And it's just, it's so, so good. It's a long film, don't be wrong, it's a long movie. It's like two hours, 40 minutes. It's a long film. But at the same time though, it doesn't feel long. And it just feels like two hours in a push. And it's just, it's such an exciting experience. You know, I spoke about this again in my first with this film. But the best films feel like an experience. They feel like an experiential event. They don't feel like a film, if you go on a meme there. You know, my favourite films of the year so far, The Northman and The Batman, my other two favourite films of the year, you know, they don't feel like films for me. They feel like an experience. And when I watch The Batman, I feel like I'm going through Matt Reeves' experience of Gotham. When I watch The Northman, I feel like I'm experiencing, you know, Robert Eggers' you know, vision of this Viking epic. Told in such an exciting way. And then when I watch Elvis, I feel like I'm going to experience with Baz Luhrmann when I'm learning about Elvis' life. And it's just, it's so, so good. And that, and that is why I think Elvis is the best musical battle pick. Hopefully make my point clear. I don't know if I am whatsoever. But the fact when people go, well, musical battle picks are all the same. Doesn't really matter. And I do feel a lot of people have also seen people say, well, I can't wait to see the new superhero film, but you know, you know what you're going to get from that. You know what you're going to get from musical battle pick, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. That's not a bad thing if you know what you're going to get from it. It's how the story's told. Don't be wrong if you watch a musical battle pick and you don't like it. It's not because you knew where the story was going, is it? It's because you didn't think it was made well, which is fair enough. You know, I know some people out there who don't like Walking Man, which is fair enough because they don't like musicals. I also know some people out there who are not huge fans of Stroud Compton, which again is fair enough because they just they weren't they weren't really into the style of storytelling and they thought the movie was a bit generic. But at the same time though, you know, I also <laughs> We really like those movies because they're kind of told in different ways. Like, I really like Rocky Man because it's a musical fantasy. I really like, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody because it's Queen and I really enjoy the way it tells its story. And I really enjoy some of those other musical biopics as well, like Get On Up because they have great performances. I think Stroud Compton has a really interesting style of storytelling. I think that Elvis Hill has a really showy and exciting style of storytelling, which is one of the reasons I absolutely love it, honestly. It really is. And, you know, it looks expensive, which all films should in my opinion it's showy and i just i really like that and so i want to clarify my point once again here i don't think elvis is the best bow pick i've seen I, I need to think about that a lot more maybe it is the best bow pick i've seen i don't know but there's a lot more bow picks out there which aren't musical bow picks but at the same time though it is the best musical bow pick i've seen and those people who might be put off watching the film because they know the story they've seen the story done in rocket man with me rapsy what line and so on and so on, so on. I don't think you should be put off by this film because you know the story of every single comic movie, every single super movie coming out soon. But you're still gonna go and watch that, same as spy movies. So 
Go and watch musical Balpin. Go and watch Elvis. Because it's all about the filmmaking. It's all about the execution. And that's what makes Elvis different. That's the point why I love Elvis though. Because it's just, it's told amazingly. And I just, I have such a good time with it every single time I watch it. Because, you know, I mean, I've only seen it twice now. I said that, I started there like I've seen it about five times. No, I've seen it twice. But each time I watched it, you know, I noticed more and more detail. It's just the fact that it's storytelling. It just makes, you know, you just feel like you're watching Elvis. You know, Austin Butler does an absolutely incredible job playing Elvis. I don't think they could have chosen someone better to play him. And, you know, I don't know if he actually sung uh, in the film or whether it's like a mix. Sometimes it's him singing as Elvis or sometimes it's actually the real life Elvis and he's, you know, lip syncing like Rami Malek did with Freddie Mercury and Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't know if it's actually him singing or not in the entirety of the film because I've been listening to the soundtrack on Spotify recently and he he's in the soundtrack quite a bit, you know, Austin Butler's voice is in the soundtrack quite a bit but also, you know, Elvis is in the soundtrack quite a bit as well so I don't know how much of the film is actually Austin Butler singing or how much of the film is Elvis singing I know Austin Butler does sing in the movie but I don't know how much of him is actually singing, is he singing the entirety of the film? I don't know, or whether it's mixed together. Again, I don't know. If you know, please let me know in the comment section below because I'd love to know. I'd love to know, you know, the answer to that, if it, whether it's actually Austin Bullard singing the film or not. But still, yes, I do think that Austin Bullard plays Elvis fantastically, and especially in the vaguest sections of the film, you know, towards the end of the movie. I was actually struggling to differ between the real life Elvis and the Austin Butler Elvis that we see in the film because the couple moments like he looks exactly like Elvis and I actually I watched it for the second time I watched it from the second time with my mom and I came out of the cinema and I was like he looks so like Elvis in the Vegas sequences and my mom went no because I think that was actual stock footage of Elvis that they put into the Vegas sequence of the movie hopefully you understand what sequence I'm talking about if you've seen the film but yes I said that to mom and then my mom was like oh no I think they used real stock footage and I was like I don't think they did Honestly, just he looks so so like Elvis towards the end of the movie, especially, and I just think he plays him so so well. And sometimes it is hard to differ between the Austin Butler Elvis that we got with this movie and also the real life Elvis, but just in the most amazing way possible, the way you want for musical biopic. And at the same time, though, I think that Tom Hanks is terrific again. I enjoy the performance a lot more, you know. And also the one who played Priscilla, I forgot the name of the actress now, but again, she's brilliant. I, I also just watched *The Staircase*, by the way, she's also in that. But yes, go on my way the staircase you haven't already but anyway yeah i think she's great in the film and also i just think that the performances all around fantastic and the aesthetic is brilliant and i think the concert sequences are done so fantastically because you know you actually feel like you're in those concert sequences because you know baslam's direction and i spoke about this before i saw a tweet on twitter once where somebody said you know baslam's direction is like when you put a camera on a tumble dryer and it just you put it around and that's why it's kind of like a camera on a tumble dryer yes it is like that but it works in the concert sequences you feel the hectiness of the concert sequences but you also feel like that's of joy, that sort of, that sort of a, you know, a sort of, uh, what's the word, adrenaline, a concert sequence. You get that with Basil Lum's direction in this film, and just in the way you want. Like when you see the Vegas sequences, you just feel that sort of adrenaline. When you see his 68 comeback special, when you see Elvis doing his Christmas special, and when you see him perform after Bobby Kennedy's death, it's so, so exciting to watch. Or when you see Elvis perform for the first time, and then you see all these girls screaming, it makes you want to tap your foot as well. You get a sense of adrenaline just in Basil Lum's direction, which is perfect perfectly marries up to the story being told on the screen. It's such a brilliant film. It really is. And I've seen it twice now. I've seen it again for the third time to more of my other mates. You know, I haven't actually seen it my mates. One of my mates hasn't seen it yet. And I'm very excited to hear what he's going to think about it. But yes, I'm seeing it for the third time tomorrow. And I just... I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love this movie. I really do. And I can't wait to watch it for the third time. It is still my favourite movie of 2022. Because I think, it, like I said before, I think it trans the Batman. Because the Batmans are quite a dark and gritty movie, both in tone and in lighting. But I love that about the film. But this movie, visually, is gorgeous to watch. It's spectacular. It's so exciting and enthralling to watch as well. Just in its visuals. Honestly, it looks expensive. And I know the first time I viewed Elvis, I said that the CGI was a bit off-putting. And although I do think the CGI is a bit ropey to, you know, a certain degree, a bit later on in the movie, it didn't really bother me that much the second time. I've got to admit, I don't really have much criticisms, other than the fact that the first half of the film is a tad bit messy and just could have slowed down a bit. Other than the fact that the first half an hour of the film, you know, throws you in, and the second time, I don't know, it just kind of felt a bit messier. Other than that, I can't really think of any other criticisms with this film, and even that is not a huge criticism, because, you know, I can't even want to get myself in for a second time, 
but at the same time, if you watch this for the first time, just be wary that the film throws you in. There's no sort of, you know, it's not like Bohemian Rhapsody, we have somebody to love building you up in the first five minutes or setting you in for the rest of the movie. It's not like that. It throws you straight in, you're into the life of Elvis, you're in the Vegas sequences, and you cut back to his earlier life, you learn about Colonel Tom Parker, brilliant play by Tom Hanks, and it just, it throws you into this story, which isn't going to be for everyone, but was for me. I love the fact that it did that, but it is also a bit messy in the first half of an hour, but then it settles in, and like, the second half of the film is just so, so brilliant. Like, I love the first half of the film as well, but the second half of the film is really when it gets you in the feels. It's really when it starts getting emotional, and it starts getting moving. I like the final scene between Elvis and Priscilla almost makes you cry. I've seen the film twice now, and it almost makes you cry. And the final scene of the movie as well, not to go too way here, but the final scene of the movie where, you know, Elvis sings Unchained Melody, it's so, so heartbreaking. It really is. And it's just, it's such a good movie. I absolutely love it. And I could ramble on more and more about how much I adore this movie. It's so well done. It's so well directed. It's so exciting to watch. The music in the film is brilliant, both in the terms of the score, in the terms of the way the Elvis music is used, and how the modern day music in the film is infused with Elvis' music in a really exciting way. And I just think... I think it's absolutely incredible. I really can't recommend it enough. And honestly, if you're sleeping on this movie, and if you're thinking not to watch it because you want to save your money for Thor and Thunder, that's fair enough. But still, get a bit more cash out and go watch this film anyway. If you've got nothing to do, go and watch the cinema because it is just so, so good. I can't recommend it enough. Even if you don't have a cinema near you, buy it when it comes out on DVD, rent it when it comes out on VOD. Just, oh God. <laughs> I have been rambling on about how much I love it, but I just, oh yes, I do. I really love this movie. I can't recommend it enough. I think it's incredible. I think it's amazing. I adore its pieces. And I just think it's my favourite film of 2023 so far. And it's going to take a lot to top it. And I can't wait to see it again. And it is just such... It's just such an amazing experience. It's an experience in the end. And that is why I just, I absolutely love Elvis. And so, after watching it a second time, I'm still going to say that Elvis is a 10 out of 10. Again, it's been a very long while since I've given a 10 out of 10 on this channel. Well, it feels like a long while anyway. And it also feels like a long while since I've been excited about talking about a movie, by the way. Like, it probably even wasn't that long, to be honest. Like, the last time I was excited about talking about a movie was probably in March with The Northman. And then before that, it was probably February or March with The Batman as well, you know. It hasn't actually been that long since I've been that excited about talking about a film. But at the same time, though, it feels like I've been a long time. Because I've seen many of the movies in the meantime, like Lightyear, like, you know, Top of Maverick. I quite enjoyed Top of Maverick, but I wasn't that excited about it. And also, there have been other movies as well, which I can't think of off the top of my head, which I've enjoyed. Like, you know, Good Little Leo Grande, I enjoyed that movie. But those movies don't make me excited when I come out of the cinema. And, you know, this movie did. Like, the first time I watched it, I did speak about this in my first review. I was in a bit of a daze. I really was. Like, I was walking around the town where I lived, like... Ooh, that was something else. And then the second time I watched, I was like, yep, still got that feeling. And I just think that's what's so magical about the film. It's a magical film. It has a fantastic feeling that you want to get out of Sony musicals. You want to get out of Sony barrel picks. And it leaves you that triumphant feeling that you got at the end of Bohemian Rhapsody once you saw, you know, Freddie Mercury the performance of his life at a Live Aid, at the reaction of Live Aid, should I say, anyway, in Bohemian Rhapsody. And it gives you that same feeling coming out of Walking Man, where you see, you know, Tan Edgerton's version of Elton John doing I'm Still Standing like he does in the music video. It gives you the same feeling coming out of Walk the Line. You know, when you watch Walk the Line, it gets to the end of the movie. It's quite emotional, but at the same time, then when you get to the end of What's Love Got To Do With It, and you learn that Tina Turner had a great life after she left Ike Turner. It just, it's things like that which just make you like, oh, it's just, it's kind of heartwarming. And sometimes it's heartbreaking when we get to the end of these movies, like when you get to the end of Bohemian Rhapsody, and then you find out that Freddie Mercury died from AIDS quite a few years after, or we get to the end of this movie, and you find out what happened to Elvis. You know, even so, it can be quite heartbreaking. It's also that weird mix of bittersweetness. You see their lives told in such an exciting way with these films and then you get to the end and it's sad what happened to them if you don't already know or if you do know you might not know to the, you know, the same extent that the film tells you but still when you get to the end it's sometimes heartbreaking but at the same time it's also bittersweet because you just watch their story to the most amazing way possible and that's how I feel about Elvis. Again, not sure if I make my point clear there, really not because Hay Fever has taken over me today but still, nevertheless, Hopefully make my point clear. It's just, 
I love that amazing bit of Sweet Fear and they get the enemies for battle picks and this movie did that once again. I got to the end of this movie and especially the second time I got to the end and there was this fantastic bit of Sweet Feeling I had. I was like, yeah, that's the feeling you want coming out of a musical battle pick and that's the feeling I got coming out of Elvis. Overall, I adore this movie. It's fantastic. After watching it a second time, my love of it has grown. Sure, I've noticed a couple more problems with it, but at the same time, no, no film's perfect and Elvis is no exception, but it's perfect for me. It's perfect for me. It's a masterpiece. And again, this is all coming from someone who's not an Elvis fan, wasn't an Elvis fan before I watched the movie. I am now. I listen to a lot of his music, you know. Suspicious man. Suspicious man. Again, that's a terrible Elvis impression. Honestly, terrible. But you get the point I'm making. It was just, I love this movie. I've been, lost, I've been listening to a lot of his music. You know, if I can dream of it. I just, I love his music now. After watching the movie, that's what the film did to me. It made me fall in love with his music. And I was listening to his music when I was planning this review today, and I just... <sighs> I adore this movie. I can't wait to watch it again. I think it's a masterpiece. I think it's an astonishing piece of filmmaking, and I just think it's so, so good. And now it's also my new favourite musical battle pick, Overcoming Him Rhapsody, which I adore to pieces. I also think it's better than Love and Mercy, which is the other battle pick I also got to mention. Your Love and Mercy is a Brian Wilson's Beach Boys battle pick. I think it's better than that. But still, nevertheless, I think this movie is absolutely incredible. I think it's a masterpiece, and I just absolutely love it. I really do. And so, all in all, I'm going to say that after watching Elvis a second time, I'm going to say that this movie is still a 10 out of 10 for me. Anyway guys, what do you think of Elvis? Please you comment down below and know your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyway guys, thank you as always for watching and if you haven't yet, please you click down below and not subscribe on this video and look forward to many more both film and TV views coming very soon on this channel. See you guys again soon, but bye for now. Bye!